everyone, my name is Madeline and I create crafting content here on YouTube. Today is part two of my baby blanket tutorial series this week. And in today's video, I'm gonna be taking the really classic baby blanket that I showed you how to knit on Tuesday's video, linked up above and down below. <laughs> and I'm gonna show you how to add a fun design to the top of the blanket. So I decided to add an elephant. This one I'll have available for download down below if you're curious and add, wanna add this design. But of course, if you wanted to add whatever design you come up with, you can do that as well using these same techniques. So first, what I'm gonna show you is how I created my design on graph paper. Then I'm gonna show you how I transferred that design onto my knit work. And lastly, I'm gonna show you how I use the embroidery chain stitch to actually create this design with a contrasting yarn color. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave those down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button that way you stay up to date on all my future videos. Let's get started. So to start out, what I did is I created an elephant design on a sheet of graph paper. So across this bottom axis, I counted the number of stitches on my baby blanket that approximately I wanted my design to be. And then I sketched out my elephant to size. Now there are a couple things that are important to remember when you're designing something. So first is that your gauge in knitting isn't a perfect one-to-one -one ratio. And what I mean by that is stitches across aren't the same size as they are tall. So if I were to just sketch this exactly as it's shown here, it wouldn't end up being this exact same shape. So that's why I'm gonna show you the next step where I actually take a marker and I draw out this same elephant on my work. And that'll help me rescale this design to being the correct proportions on my blanket. But I've always found that sketching it out on graph paper and showing it block by block and having different ratios for how far different components are is really helpful. So I'll have this one available for download down below, <laughs> a cleaner version without all my scribbles along the sides. But that's just important to remember is that if you create your design on graph paper, the ratios won't exactly end up being exactly the same because knit stitches aren't exactly one to one in dimension. So. I'll take you on to the next step now where I'm gonna transfer this design onto my knit work. So first, starting off with the materials I'm gonna be using. So first up, I have my yarn. This is again, the brunette blanket yarn. I just have it in a white colorway. Next up, I have a tapestry needle and I've already cut off some of my yarns. This is about two and a half to three yards. And then lastly, I have a washable marker and this one's a Crayola ultra clean washable marker. Um, you just want to make sure you test it out on your work before you use it. I've already verified that this does work for me. And basically what I'm going to use this washable marker for is I'm going to first sketch out where I want the elephant to go. And then I'm going to go through and use the embroidery technique to actually add the white yarn. So it just helps me transfer the graph paper onto the blanket. So I'm going to start at the bottom of my elephant here and sketch out where the feet are going to go. And then I'm going to move upwards. So that's going to help me place this elephant onto my blanket. So to start out, you're just gonna wanna pick somewhere along your design to begin. So I'm gonna start along this leg all the way over here at the right hand side. And I'm gonna take my tapestry needle. Again, it has about three yards on it. And I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle from the back side of my work up through where my line is. Now I'm gonna pull on my yarn and I'm gonna leave about eight inches of a tail that I can weave in later on. Now I wanna take my tapestry needle with my yarn and go back down into that exact same spot. Now when I pull the thread here, or yarn, sorry, <laughs> I wanna make sure that I don't pull it all the way through. So I wanna leave a little bit of a loop. So what I like to use is the top of my finger and just measure out a little loop. So there's my small loop. Now when I thread my tapestry needle back up again, I'm gonna move down the leg a little bit. So wherever I want the line to keep going is where I'm gonna put my knitting or my tapestry needle next. Then I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, go up through the center of that loop. So I just caught onto that loop and pull my yarn through. 
Now again, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle, thread it down through that exact same spot. And when I pull it through, I wanna make sure that I leave a little bit of a loop again. So there's my loop. Now again, I'm gonna find the next place I want this loop to go towards. Throw my tapestry needle up in that location, go through the loop. Now I'm gonna go back down again, leaving a loop. And now I'm at the bottom of the foot. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna curve this loop over towards the left. So again, I'm gonna make my loop the right size to match the rest of them. And now when I thread my tapestry needle upwards, instead of just going, keep on going in that straight line, I'm gonna move over here to the left. So I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle up here on the left, then go through the loop. Back down in the same spot. And now I'm just going in a horizontal line, so I'm gonna find the next location I want it to go to. And now I'm just gonna continue following my design all throughout my work. And one thing I do wanna mention is that it's important that when you're doing this all throughout your work, you're always going in the same direction. And what I mean by that is like, say right now I'm going like counterclockwise through my work. I wanna make sure that I keep on going counterclockwise. That way these loops all still stay in the same direction. I don't wanna like rejoin yarn here and start going in this direction, right? I wanna come down this side to continue along. So that's just one thing to note. When you do get to the point too where you run out of yarn with the current piece you're using, what you wanna do is just instead of creating a new loop in the same location, you're just gonna thread your yarn right down to the side of where that loop is. Just to finish that off, and then you can get a new piece and come back up through the center of that loop again and just continue working as if you hadn't run out. Later on, you can go back in and weave in your ends. So now I'm gonna continue doing this process all throughout my design to create the elephant. Now, when I'm in a situation where I need to move places, so I just did this curve up around this back leg, and now I need to go back down to here to go across. All I'm gonna do is go to the back of my work and just take my tapestry needle and just basically thread it through some of these loops on the back of my work until I get about where I need to go. Yep, that looks just about right. And now I'm gonna thread my needle back up through one of the center of these loops here, whichever one I wanna start working out of. So let's say that one. And now I can just begin working across here. So I'd thread it back in to create my loop. And start moving horizontally. So that's how I move locations when I need to switch from maybe curving to going across. I hope you've enjoyed today's quick tutorial. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my new videos. I'll see you next time.